Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you're having a great day. I wanted to talk about soft body dynamics today because I've been having a lot of fun messing around with them lately. And I found a few little issues uh, while using them and some workarounds, so I wanted to share those tips with you. So I'm using this spray paint can from our industrial pack two, if you wanted to snag that. Let's go to our garage shading so you can see the lines. Um, geometry is basically your mortal enemy when using soft body. So this isn't a particularly dense model, but there is definitely some detail on the bevels and whatnot. So if we put soft body dynamics right on this model, it would probably be very slow, probably break your computer. So basically what we want to do is make a proxy object that looks almost exactly like this, but is a lot lower poly. So for this one, I made a cylinder and I made it editable and then I did some just loop selections and inner bevels and just kind of move those out and scale them down. Just covering up the original geometry um, so that it uh, encapsulates the whole thing, but it's pretty low poly. And what we're going to do is do all of our simulation on this model and then we will reference this model. Well, we'll get to that later. But first of all, we need to put our um, our simulation soft body on this cage. And if we hit play, um, we're gonna see it fall down and smush into the ground. And you can see that it's deforming quite a bit. And after it deforms, it sort of just oozes out and melts. Let's turn off our spray can for now. Um, there's a lot of options in here you can play with, but um, there's a couple that are really important. One is flexion. So if we turn flexion down to zero, it's gonna really crumple up and kind of lose all of its definition. So we might wanna kick our flexion up a little bit, maybe to 200, it'll retain a little bit more of its shape, but it still kind of oozes down and that has to do with the stiffness. So if we change the stiffness to just one, um, that's gonna help it retain its shape quite a bit. And I think I used one actually in the final. All right, so that looks pretty good. We are having some issues. Uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. But now that we have our general animation, we wanna link up our original model to this cage. And we're gonna do that using a deformer called the mesh deformer. We're gonna drop that into our spray can. And in that mesh deformer, we have a cage slot so we can drag our cage. And nothing's gonna happen right now. Um, but if we click initialize, the cage became sort of a, a wire mesh. We can actually turn that off. And then our main object inherited all of its simulation. So it's pretty cool. The computer is using this low poly version to do the actual calculations, but you're getting to see the deformation on your higher poly version. So it's a really cool setup. Um, now we have a few issues here. Let's go to garage shading and you can see that this little plastic piece is melting, which looks really weird. You'd uh, expect some of the metal to do that and crumple, but this um, this plastic piece should remain um, without any deformation. So we're gonna figure out a way to do that. Let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and we're going to use a vertex map. So if we go back to our tag here, you can see that each of these options has an associated map with it. And that's where we're gonna put a vertex map. So one thing to remember is do not put the vertex map on your, your main spray can because we are using the cage. So we need to turn off the main one, turn on the cage, and we can't really see it very well. So let's just take that display tag and delete that. We're gonna go to polygon mode. We're gonna go to select and set vertex weight. We'll hit okay and the whole thing will turn red. Now we have this little vertex tag that if we double click, it'll bring us to painting mode. So let's check our settings here. We are under add and 100 strength. So we should be able to just paint right onto here now. So um, essentially we want this end plastic piece to not be affected at all by our soft body dynamics. So we're gonna paint sort of just loosely where we want it to not affect our model. And now we can go back to our dynamics tag and drag that map into stiffness. And now what's gonna happen is this area that was yellow is going to have a stiffer uh, setting and the rest of it will have zero stiffness. All right, so let's go ahead and hit play and see what happened here. Um, so it looks like it's still being deformed a little bit on this plastic piece. So I wonder if we just didn't have enough stiffness. Let's kick that way up just so we can kind of see what's going on here. Play the simulation again. And there you go. So now that plastic piece is not um, being affected and melting at all. The problem is the rest of our model is now really melting and we want this part to have a little bit more stiffness, but we can't 
uh, use this stiffness slot because it's being used by the vertex map. So one workaround for this is if we go to that cage, and let's delete that visibility tag again. So if we double click our vertex map, what we can do is do a little bit of painting on the rest of the model and a lot of painting on the end part, just to sort of balance it out a little bit. So if we go to our options under strength, we can just make that 1% and we can just lightly paint over um, the other parts. That way they will get a little bit of stiffness uh, back into them but it won't be nearly as much as the end part. And then if we want to have some parts that sort of crumple, um, what we can do is erase. So this middle band will have less stiffness. All right, so let's see what that looks like. We'll turn back on our spray can and we'll hit the simulation. And it looks like we are in business. The end part is not getting squished at all. And the middle part is not just completely melting into the ground, but it, it's holding up a little bit. So that's a great way if you use a vertex map to really isolate the different parts of your model that you want to be affected by these different options. And like I said, all these options have a vertex map, so you can get very specific if you want to. All right, so that's a couple tips for you when using soft bodies, a way to use that mesh deformer to set up a cage so that it's a little bit easier to manage, and then also a way to use vertex maps to really isolate what parts of your model get crushed. Um, another thing that I do is um, just have the simulation run and then save out this model in this state, and then what you have is a prop that's crushed or um, beaten down. You can have a soda can that's squished or whatever. And instead of having to model it so that it's squished, you can just run the simulation, have it crumple down, and now you have two versions of your model, one where it's perfectly fine and one where it's all crumpled up. And instead of modeling two, you can just run a simulation and then get that result. So it's a pretty sweet effect. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks as always for checking out the Pixel Lab, and we will talk to you next time. Ciao.